Hello, we're almost done with the week. Today, our verses are Acts chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. By the way, um, I don't know who's watching this. Um, I get the impression that there might be a couple dozen, maybe two and a half dozen people who watch these videos. Um, I don't have a lot of patrons. I think I have five patrons on Patreon, patreon.com. Um, so, uh, you know, I've toyed with possibly a reading, uh, basically doing less analysis, less inter interlinear, less parsing, and doing just Greek reading. So like doing a chapter of Greek in Acts a week uh, and not doing the analysis, the full analysis, just kind of reading through larger chunks uh, of material. So like five or six verses a day, just reading it more than analyzing it. Anyway, you can weigh in on YouTube or Patreon uh, Patreon as to what you think of that. But here we are for today, and we're going to do this for the rest of the week at least. Uh, go ahead and see if you can pronounce the Greek. Here's my pronunciation. Mu seis men apen, poti prophetain who mean anastase, kurios ho theos, ekton alphon humon, hos me, eme, autu akusaste. Katapanta hosa an lalese, pros humas, verse 23. Estai de pasa suke, hetis an me akuse, tu profetu ekenu. Ex olu, oh boy, here's a big one. Ex, ex ol e thru the satai, ek tu lau. Ex ol e thru the satai. Wow. Uh, 24. Kai pantas de hoi prophetai apo Samuel kai ton kafek seis hosoi la lesan kai katengelan tas hemeras tautas. Okay. Now, see if you can translate some of it. And here's my shot. Uh, Moses, on the one hand, said quote, and this is a direct discourse kind of situation, haughty really has two, two grammatical functions. One, it can introduce a causal clause. Two, it can introduce a noun clause. As a noun clause, it can kind of do a normal noun clause, or it can introduce direct discourse like this. When it introduces direct discourse, um, we often don't translate the hoti, and this capital P here suggests that we do have a quote here, and it is a quote. It's from Deuteronomy. Moses, on the one hand, said, quote, a prophet to you uh, will cause to rise the Lord God. This is accusative. Uh, this is nominative. So this is the subject. The Lord God will cause to rise a prophet for you. Probably a dative of advantage. Uh, having a prophet around is a great advantage. Um, this is a future of an uh, anistomy, I believe. Uh, you could translate it, the Lord God will rise but it really has a, it's a causative active, a special, there's a simple active where you just say the Lord God rises or will rise. And then there's a causative active. The Lord God will cause to rise. And that's legit. You can, you can stick the word cause to in there. Um, the Lord God will cause a prophet to rise from the brothers of you like me, a prophet like me, a prophet like Moses. Him here, a cool, um, can take its object in the genitive case. So if you're puzzled about why out to is genitive, it's we call it a genitive of root idea. It, 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 because hearing uh, that word can take its object in the genitive. Um, hear him according to all whatever uh, he should say to you. The little bomb there, um, untranslatable conditional particle. Uh, you don't translate it so much, although it, it makes this into a whatever. The ever part has to do with this, and you expect a subjunctive verb uh, with this on, uh, should say to you. And notice the, the contingency there. Uh, it's not indicative, it's subjunctive. It's whatever he might or should uh, say to you. Those are, it, it's a different mode. We say it's in the subjunctive mood, and not the indicative, not the indicating mood, but the more probability mood. Um, and he, and every soul, this is nominative, so this is the subject, and every soul will be whoever, 
the ever again comes from the on, and we expect a uh, subjunctive, not surprised, not by it. Uh, there's the not. This is the not form of not used with the non-indicative. Um, and every soul will be whatever should not hear the prophet that, and whoever should not hear that prophet, every person, not soul as in detachable me, but as in person, uh, still quoting Deuteronomy here, uh, will be destroyed from the people, will be cut off, future passive there. Verse 24, and uh, even all, and, let's do the and first, and even all the prophets, um, Kai here uh, is not needed because we already have an and, so I downshifted into one of the alternative uses of Kai, which is basically it can mean also and it can mean even. So I, I went with even. And even all the prophets from Samuel, from Samuel, and in order, as many as spoke and announced these days. Okay, I get the impression that I chopped that off mid-sentence. We'll find out next week or tomorrow now when we finish up uh, chapter three. Okay, so the interlinear, same thing I just said. Moses said, quote, prophet, uh, the Lord God will cause to rise for you from the brothers of you like me. Uh, hear him according to all, whatever he should say to you. And it will be every soul, every person that should not hear the prophet, that prophet will be destroyed from the people and even all the prophets from Samuel and in order as many as spoke and announced these days. Okay. Uh, the quote, I think, ends here, and then uh, Luke is here to saying, it's not just Moses who said this. The other prophets said it too. We'll talk a little bit about, again, uh, the New Testament use of the Old Testament uh, on Saturday. Okay, parsing. Uh, so this is future. The sigma tells me it's future. Oh, ace A, third person singular, active indicative ending uh, from anistemi. Okay. Uh, La lese. Now, the, the on told me I was going to have a subjunctive. Um, oh, ace, a, third person singular. See, actually, you can see how the subjunctive third person singular has fried this. The epsilon got fried into an eta, and then the iota subscripts hanging on for do lo, dear life. Um, the sigma here, uh, sigma normally indicates future. In the indicative mood, sigma indicates future. But in the subjunctive mood, sigma indicates aorist. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't make up this language. So it's aorist active subjunctive, third singular from laleo, contract verb. Uh, here's this one. Theta, eta, sigma tells me future passive. Epsilon tells me it's indicative. Uh, may, uh, lua mai, lue, lue, tai tells me it's third person singular. And then the word is basically uh, ex olethruo. That's a mouthful. And lastly, this one. Uh, this alpha is the hint that it's an aorist. It's a liquid verb, so don't do sigmas. Uh, the double lambda becomes a single lambda outside the present stem. Uh, we have internal lengthening in the aorist, as we have come to regret of the aorist of liquid verbs. And there you have it. Third plural is the new there. This has been a few Greek thoughts. Again, weigh in if you think about, about whether this analysis is really that helpful or whether uh, you would just like me to read vast tracts of land in the book of Acts and perhaps elsewhere. Uh, thank you. Have a good day.